most people, though, when, they, when you do that, when you decide to really take a look, it's like lighting a match in a dark place. Hmm. So you feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So it's easier to turn on your TV. It's easier to, hmm. to play with your cell phone, to distract yourself hmm. from those feelings. Well, when you understand that change really requires becoming uncomfortable to a certain degree, and that's normal, that you're yeah. leaving the known and okay. you're stepping into the unknown, okay. then it begs the question, what thoughts do you want to fire? If you believe that you're creating your life and you're living by lack, well, lack isn't going to create abundance, right? Hmm. So if you can, get ready because something weird or unusual, some synchronicity, some coincidence, some mm. opportunity is gonna land in your lap and you didn't have to go and get it. Yes, it came to you. Welcome back to Max Out, everybody. I'm Ed Milet, and this is the first time in the history of the show we've had a return guest. And the reason that we've had this return guest is because you've requested more of this man and also because selfishly, I wanna be around him more. <laughs> <laughs> this is my dear friend. This is Dr. Joe Dispenza, everybody. Hey, Joe, bro. thank you for being here. So happy to be with you, Ed. It's gonna be so great today. As most of you know, Joe is a lecturer, he's an author, he's a neuroscientist, he's um, an expert, I think, on the mind and body connection. He's lectured in 35 different countries plus five different continents, and he's one of the most sought after speakers in the world. And I really think he's become the expert. I think you bridge science and spirituality better than anybody walking on earth right now. Oh, thank you. And, um, and I know my audience felt that way from the first time that you were with us too. So you're also a ratings grabber, by the way. So that's the other reason we're having you back today. This man, everybody wants to hear more from him. He's hot and there's a reason for it because there's really nobody like him in the world. So let's dig in, you ready? I'm ready. Guys, it's heavy note taking day. So we're going to lay some foundational stuff here, and then we're going to get to some stuff towards the middle and the end that is literally going to blow your mind and change your life. And, um, and that's why I've asked Joe back today. So let's talk about some basic stuff today first. Lay the foundation. Nothing with you is basic, but what is the power of thought? Because we talk about this all the time. This In personal development today, everyone's talking about, you know, you got to control your thoughts and control mm -hmm. your habits and all these things. And there's a baseline message about that. But you're the best in the world at explaining exactly why this is so important. So give us some background there. Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, if we, everything starts with a thought. I mean, everything mm -hmm. that you do in your life, you, you have to have a thought before you initiate an action, right? So, mm -hmm. so if you believe that your thoughts have something to do with your destiny, like any great leader in history understands that, uh, the first thing you have to do is you have to decide, are you going to be defined by a vision of the future mm -hmm. Or are you going to live by the memories of the past? Mm. So I'll give you an example. Most people wake up in the morning and your brain is a record of the past. It's an artifact of everything you've learned and experienced to this moment, right? Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a memory bank. So most people wake up in the morning and they start thinking about their problems. And those problems are connected to certain people and things at certain times and places. And the moment they start, start turning on those circuits, those memories are actually causing them to think mm. in the past. Mm. Every single one of those memories has an emotion associated with them, and emotions are the end product of past experiences. So then, the moment they recall the event or they, the, they recall some problem in their life, they start feeling unhappy, they start feeling discouraged, they start feeling anxious. Mm -hmm. Now, thoughts are the uh, language of the brain and feelings are the language of the body, and how you think and how you feel creates your state of being. So we could say then, mm -hmm. Most people's entire state of being when they start their day is in the familiar past. Well, if you live in the familiar past, then it makes sense you're going to create the predictable future. Mm. So what happens for most people is they get stuck in their biology. So think about this. Mm. Your body is your unconscious mind. It doesn't know the difference between an experience in your life that creates an emotion and an emotion that you can create by thought alone. Mm. So if you're living by the same emotion every single day and those emotions are influencing your thoughts, and you can't think greater than how you feel, or feelings have become the means of thinking, you're thinking in the past. Your lens of the future is going to be colored by the past, so you can't see possibilities. So most people like to wait for crisis or disease or diagnosis before they wake up yes. enough to see. Well, the challenge is, is that biology tends to be redundant. So if you keep thinking the same thoughts, and those thoughts be begin to fire certain circuits in your brain, the nerve cells that fire together wire together so all of a sudden you start getting hardwired and those are the thoughts that you can think the easiest mm. at the same time those thoughts produce chemicals called emotions and the next thing you know your body gets accustomed to living by the same emotions and it could be guilt 
It could be unhappiness, it could be pain, but at least it's familiar to you, at least you can predict it. So mm. some people would rather cling to the familiar than take a chance in possibility. So for most people then they say, well, I, I don't really see how my thoughts have anything to do with my destiny. Well, that's because 95% of those thoughts are subconscious programs, right? So you're not even conscious that you think those thoughts. So mm -hmm. the first step to change is starting to think about what you've been thinking about yes. and change it. And, and then when you begin to observe those thoughts, you're no longer the program, you're the consciousness observing Just the Just simply by being an observer of your thoughts. Right, so, so, the, so most people though, when, they, when you do that, when you decide to really take a look, it's like lighting a match in a dark place. Hmm. So you feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So it's easier to turn on your TV, it's easier to, hmm. to play with your cell phone, to distract yourself hmm. from those feelings. Well, when you understand that change really requires becoming uncomfortable to a certain degree, and that's normal, that you're yeah. leaving the known and okay. you're stepping into the unknown, okay. then it begs the question, what thoughts do you want to fire and wire in your brain? Because your attention on those thoughts begins to re reorganize circuitry, re remold the brain. Mm. So, I love this, by the way. How do you flip that to your advantage? So, so meditation is really, really means to become familiar with, correct? Right. So we're going to talk a little bit about meditation as we go forward here in a second. But if it is true that your body is your unconscious mind, which I didn't know that, and it is true that it does not know the difference between a real event or an imagined event, can't you really use that to your advantage, though? Of course. So, because okay, yeah, so let's talk yeah. about that okay. because yeah. this is uh, because you do this really well. Mm -hmm. Because most people are waiting for their life to change. Yes. So they can feel gratitude, to feel abundance, to mm -hmm. feel whole. You know, that's the old model of cause and effect, you know. Mm -hmm. So if you're living with emptiness, you're living with lack, you're living with pain, most people have been conditioned that something out there has to take away this emptiness or feeling inside of them. But if you believe that you're creating your life and you're living by lack, well, lack isn't going to create abundance, right? Mm. So. So then it makes sense then that you don't really actually create wealth, you generate wealth, you oh, generate wow. abundance. So the moment you start teaching your body emotionally what that future is going to feel like before it's made manifest, well, your body is the unconscious mind, mm -hmm. believes it's living in that future in the present moment. Now, it's a scientific mm -hmm. fact that it's the environment that signals the gene, okay? Mm -hmm. The end product from an experience in the environment is an emotion. So when you begin to embrace an elevated emotion, you're beginning to signal the gene ahead of the environment. What's the importance of that? Well, genes make proteins, and proteins are responsible for the structure and the function of your body. Hmm. And the expression of proteins is the expression of life. So by you creating an elevated emotion and teaching your body what that future will feel like before it's made manifest, your body's starting to live in that future reality in the present moment. Now, here's the key. If you were able to become familiar with gratitude, become familiar with wholeness, become familiar with abundance, to become familiar with freedom, mm -hmm. and you're able to generate those chemicals every single day, more than likely you would be walking around feeling like your future has already happened and you would no longer be looking for it to happen. You would already feel like it has happened. Now, what is the importance of that? Well, you're literally becoming somebody else. Yes. So you're leaving your lack. You're leaving your guilt. You're leaving your emptiness behind. Oh my gosh, it's so good. <laughs> so you talk about, I want to stay in here for a minute because I know people right now are going, oh my gosh. And I'm doing that right now too. So now we get into stuff that just benefits me. One of my favorite things you say is that, and it's, it's a general thing, but I want to move into how you become this. So you say often that in order to change your personal reality, you must change your personality. But I think also that people maybe aren't aware of how that personality was formed. And we started to go down that road, but mm -hmm. I want to keep going for a minute. Sure. And so you talk often about how a mood over time can end up turning into a personality of sorts. So yeah. could you talk about that a little bit? Sure, let's talk about it in two ways, okay? okay? So your personality, literally, Ed, is made up of how you think, how you act, and how you feel. And how you think, how you act, and how you feel is your personality, and your personality is intimately connected to your personal reality, your life. Mm -hmm. So then if you want to change your life, your personal reality, you got to change your personality. And mm -hmm. here we go again. You got to start becoming conscious of your unconscious thoughts. Mm -hmm. You got to start noticing how you act, how you speak. You got to pay attention to how mm -hmm. you're feeling. Some mm -hmm. people would live in guilt their whole entire life and don't even know it's guilt because at least it feels like them. So then when you start doing that, you begin to objectify your subjective self. So, so then when you begin to make small changes, 
back to thought. A new thought should lead to a new choice. Mm. A new choice should lead to a new behavior. A new behavior should create a new experience and a new experience should create a new emotion. Yes. And that new emotion is teaching your body chemically to understand what your mind is intellectually understood. Now your Mm. body is embodying the truth, right? Mm. So then the new emotion should inspire new thoughts and that's called evolution. So how do we get stuck? It's really simple. The stronger the the emotion you feel from some event in your life, be it a betrayal or a trauma or whatever, the more altered you feel inside of you, the more you pay attention to the cause outside of you. So the brain takes a snapshot. It freezes an image and embosses that pattern neurologically in the brain. That's called a memory. Mm. So we create long-term memories from strong emotional events, okay? okay? So is that true? That I just want to understand. The, maybe the larger the event in terms of its emotion to you, the stronger of a hold it has over you? Yeah, well, okay. the more it's embossed in your biology. Okay. Okay. So some certain people have a strong experience in their life, mm-hmm. and it catches all of the brain's attention. So now okay. they think neurologically within the circuits of the past experience Mm. and they feel chemically within the boundaries of those emotions and so how you think and how you feel creates a state of being now here's the problem that if you don't know how to mediate or control your emotional reaction to that event and you keep that refractory period of chemicals going on for extended periods of time so that the event produces a chemical change and the body needs to return back to homeostasis or balance Mm. but if it can't then the elongation of that emotional reaction for weeks, say, for days or weeks is called a mood. So you say, Ed, what's wrong with you? I'm in a mood. Why are you in a mood? Well, this thing happened to me five days ago and I'm having one long emotional reaction. So then what you do is you keep telling the story about it, keep firing and wiring the same circuits and you keep conditioning the body into the past. So then you wake up in the morning, you look for the emotion. So then now all of a sudden you keep it lingering for 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 weeks or months that's called the temperament well why is he so angry i don't know let's ask him why are you so angry well this thing happened to me eight months ago i'm having one long emotional reaction i'm memorizing my emotions you keep it going on for years on end that's called a personality trait so then a person then is memorizing themselves by living in the past and so then you say to him well well, tell me the story now the latest research